99% of people are not willing to do what it takes to make their dreams come true. The Marines have a saying, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. The center of bringing any dream into fruition is self-discipline. You know, some, something as simple as food and eating, it, it's not about your, your body as much as it is about your mind. It's getting command of your mind to be able to choose actions that are in your own best interest. Every day, we are choosing shit that's not in our own best interest. So if the world is attacking you and the world wants to fight you and the world's trying to hold you down, so you're going to kick yourself in the balls? So you're going to stop yourself from getting what you dream. And I think the word discipline has kind of gotten a, a bad name. We think about it in terms of punishment. I'm not, I'm not talking about discipline in that way. I'm talking about discipline in the sense that you, you forego immediate pleasure for the exchange of long-term self-respect. I believe that self-discipline is the definition of self-love. That when you say that you love yourself, that means that you have behavior towards yourself that is loving. Self-discipline is the center of all material success. You cannot win the war against the world if you can't win the war against your own mind. Self-love is when you say to yourself, oh, man, look, I know you and that girl got a real connection. Um, I know y'all vibe, but that's your girl's cousin. So I love you too much to let you do that. It's like you say to yourself, hey man, look, I know you wanna eat that pizza and it'll be really good, you know, but I can't let you eat that, man, because if, if you eat that pizza, you're gonna feel like shit, you know, and I, I just, I love you too much to let you eat that. Self-love is, hey, look, I know you got a, a, a test on Monday, you know, and I know you really want to go out with your friends and Saturday night you want to go out, but if you fail that test, you're not going to feel good about yourself. You know, I just, I love you too much to let you go out tonight. Self-discipline is self-love. If you want to be happy, you have to love yourself, which means you have to discipline your behavior. The road to sustained happiness is through disciplining your behavior. We tend to base our self-esteem on what other people think. And that's not really self-esteem. Self-esteem is supposed to be how we feel about ourselves. And I was just saying how dangerous it is to allow other people to determine how you're going to feel about you. And it's kind of like looking into a broken mirror. You're going to look in a broken mirror and then change your face to try to look good in this defiled, busted, broken mirror. And it, it just other people's opinions is a really way to determine how we feel about ourselves. It don't matter whose fault it is that something is broken if it's your responsibility to fix it. For example, it's, it's not somebody's fault if their father was an abusive alcoholic, but it's for damn sure their responsibility to figure out how they're gonna deal with those traumas and try to make a life out of it. It's not your fault if your partner cheated and ruined your marriage, but it is for damn sure your responsibility to figure out how to take that pain and how to overcome that and build a happy life for yourself. Fault and responsibility do not go together, it sucks, but they don't. When something is somebody's fault, 
We want them to suffer. We want them punished. We want them to, to pay. We want it to be their responsibility to fix it. But that's, that's not how it works, especially when it's your heart. Your heart, your life, your happiness is your responsibility and your responsibility alone. As long as we're pointing the finger and, and, and stuck in whose fault something is, we're jammed and trapped into victim mode. When you're in victim mode, you're stuck in suffering. The road to power is in taking responsibility. Your heart, your life, your happiness is your responsibility and your responsibility alone. You can make a person smile, you can make a person feel good, you can make a person laugh, but whether or not a person is happy is deeply and totally and utterly out of your control. The prerequisite for spending time with any person is that they nourish and inspire you. They feed your flame. Look at your last five text messages. Are those people feeding your flames or dousing your fire? Put your phone down for just a second and look around. Look to the people around you. Are those people throwing logs on your fire or are they pissing on it? I want my life, I want my, my work, uh, my, my family, I want it to mean something. And it's like, it has, if, if you are not making someone else's life better, then you're wasting your time. The separation of talent and skill is one of the, 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 the greatest misunderstood concepts for people who are trying to excel, who have dreams that want to do things. Talent you have naturally. Skill is only developed by hours and hours and hours of beating on your craft. You, you don't try to build a wall. You don't set out to build a wall. You don't say, I'm going to build, build the biggest, baddest, greatest wall that's ever been built. You don't start there. You say, I'm going to lay this brick as perfectly as a brick can be laid. There will not be one brick on the face of the earth that's going to be laid better than this brick that I'm going to lay in this next 10 minutes. Yeah. And you do that every single day. And soon you have a wall. And soon you have a wall. And I think psychologically, the advantage that that, that gives me over, over a lot of people that I've, I'm have been in competition with in different situations is it's difficult to take the first step when you look how big yeah, the, exactly. the task is. The definition of who I am is very clear to me and it also redefines who I want to be in that I know for a fact that I'm stronger than I thought I was, you know? You can't help but ask yourself the question, what would I do if I was in Muhammad Ali's shoes? I'm, I'm motivated by fear. I hate being scared to do something. And I think what developed uh, in, my, in my early days was the, the attitude that I started attacking things that I was scared of. Why were you scared in your bed the night before? Why did you, what do you need that fear for? Just don't go. Why are you scared in your bed 16 hours before you jump? Why are you scared in the car? Why could you not enjoy breakfast? Fear is, fear of what? You're nowhere even near the airplane. Everything up to the stepping out there's actually no reason to be scared. It only just ruins your day. You're, you don't have to jump. And then in that moment, all of a sudden, where you should be terrified is the most blissful experience of your life. And God placed the best things in life on the other side of terror.